Yo, what do you do, you guys? It is your boy, Leon Mookie here, and I'm back. Back with you with another new part of What If Izuku Was the Dragon Blood Prince. This is part nine. In the last part, we began the final battle of that of the battle trial with Izuku keeping Bakugo busy while also insulting him and getting him riled up so he wouldn't have to, so he wouldn't focus on that if Suyu as well. And help out Ida, and not realizing that he was basically touring with him for a little bit before the two began to start fully on, start to fully fight each other. As the ba as all of those hurtful words that he said was basically all of his all of his past comrades and friends and family members, even the dragons, telling him to forget about Bakugo. As Izuku thinks of Bakugo almost like. Many of his other siblings, the siblings who refuse to, to, to ask for his help, who refuse to believe that they weren't weak after all. But even so, Izuku still wanted to find something out. But through this fight, he began to realize that he's admired Iz Bakio for the right reasons, for his determination to continue fighting on, for wanting to win and for the being his symbol of victory. But the Bakugo he, that he is now, the Bakugo that looks down on everyone, that sees people beneath him, that belittles them for their, for their efforts, even believing that his own efforts was what matters, he can't help but respect, he cannot respect that one. If anything, he, he could care little what happens to Bakugo until he was able to defeat him by becoming mini Midgan, Lead, and use and soon sending one of his powerful expl gauntlet explosions towards that high up into the into the building, allowing Suyu to get the bomb, allowing his team, being the heroes, to win. But in the result of this, it caused that B Bakugo would no longer allow his emotions, his anger, and his frustration to hold him back. That he will defeat him with his own strength and his own power. With Izuku also moving forward as well, no longer bogged down by the person that he wanted to get back as his friend. So with all that said, let's get into this, shall we guys? The very next day, Izuku was on his way to UA as the third is wondering if his third day is going to be quite eventful as his sec as his first and second day. But given what has happened in the hero course, most definitely. However, Izuku was making his way there, but right beside him being Mim as always, as she's basically clinging on to his arm with Izuku blushing. However, even though he's so he's used to this, he's still not completely well used to it, if you know what I mean. With then she's saying, "So, are you are, are you going to be okay?" With then Izuku's eyes widening. No, out of his blush, looking at Mim, what then? She, he's saying, what do you mean? I'm Tolio. That's not what I mean, Izuku. With then, she like letting go of, letting go of his arm. Before, she's saying, I know how you, you're feeling like you're letting down Bakugo, aren't you? What then, Izuku's saying, <laughs> it's really that easy to see. But then her smiling, placing one placing her right hand on her hip, while also placing her, her left hand on Izuku's cheek, with Izuku blushing before noticing the kind, caring, and loving eyes look on her in her eyes, but then saying, I'm your beloved wife after all, plus we still have that of a pact. I know how you feel, Izuku, truly, and take it from me, Somebody who originally didn't trust humans anymore or didn't have any faith in them before I met you. It's going to take time. You can't rush these things. Plus, if I recall through your memories, he was always basically egotistical, arrogant, because everybody basically spiked his ego from that of a child after all. It's going to be a while until he realized that he's not going to be on his high horse forever, sooner or later. He'll realize he's going to have to change, not for himself, but for everyone else. With then 
Izuku couldn't help but be shocked as part of him realized he shouldn't be shocked. Even though Mim is always giddily, bubbly, and is completely, well, attached to him, almost attached to him to the hip, given her love for him, he re she is still one of the five great wyvern, after all. The one of fire, Bernhilda, after all. It only makes sense that she would be this, well, aware and this observant too, with easing Izuku's heart, saying, thank you, Mim. I really appreciate your words. I feel a lot, I feel at least a little bit better now. With then, she's saying, oh, great. With then, clinging on to Izuku even more, making him blush, as saying, now, you, we better get going. You get, you still got classes. But then Izuku saying, right. With the two basically heading to UA and making steps a little bit even more further, even though, once again, she's clinging onto him pretty tightly. Soon, the reporters soon noticed that of Izuku and Mim. As the, as the reporters found out that All Might is teaching at UA and wanting to know about the number one hero and his teaching style, they began bugging almost all of the students that come through. As there are some from general studies that they, that didn't want to hear anything as they only wanted to hear from that of the hero course. However, some basically gave out their honest opinions, such as that of Ochako, Suyu, Kirishima, and Ida. However, some that didn't really care too much, such as Loudmouth Bakugo, Quiet Shoto, Shoji, mainly because he was tall and he also somewhat looked a bit threatening, even though that's far from the case from the big guy. And some that were quite nervous, especially from that of, well... Ojiro, Momo, and even Izuku. With the press basically noticing his UA uniform and we're about to go up to him wondering what's, what course is he in. With then, Mim basically stepping in front of, and stepping in front of Izuku. With the reporters, couldn't help but be confused. With then saying, Izuku, now's your chance, go. With then, Izuku's like, right, thanks ma'am, I owe you one. Hearing that, she couldn't help but whisper loud enough to only for Izuku to hear saying, there are plenty of things that you, uh, that you could do for me that you owe me in. Within hearing the seductive tone in her voice, Izuku's actually entire face basically went entirely red as he was soon basically went into UA like that of a speeding bullet trying to calm down his embarrassed blush and heat and basically heat as well. Within, what one of the cameramen saying, "Hey, the kid just went off." Within, one the reporter saying, "Seriously?" With then looking back at Mim, actually having that of an innocent look on her face, saying, "I think you all should get going. I think it's isn't it illegal to be loitering on that of school, on that of government government property being a school after all?" With then, one. One of the reporters saying, hey, what, what's your affiliation, miss? You don't seem like a UA student. With Mim still having that of a, well, calm and also non-caring tone saying, oh, just an important figure in one of the students here. That's all. You don't need to worry about me. Now then, I'll be off. With then, as Mim basically heading back to the apartment building, while also heading back to Heindal as well. With then all the reporters wanting to at least get something about All Might, even more even more information, and also wanted to speak to All Might themselves, one of the reporters would get so damn annoyed they were about to run into the school themselves. Before then, a huge barricade, iron door barricade basically slams in between, cl almost close enough to crush the reporter. With one with the with the reporter's cameraman saying. Whoa, whoa, better be careful. That's the legendary UA barricade after all. It's said to be so strong that not even Endeavor can melt through it in, with just one hit. With then she freaking out saying, seriously? What the actual hell? Are they trying to kill us? With another reporter saying, it's UA. They're always secretive, so they basically take their secrecy way too damn seriously after all. With many other reporters, cameramen, and news people couldn't help but feel so annoyed. However, 
Little did any of the news people, even those of UA, see that of a tall, lanky figure with that of light blue hair in the back, as is basically giving off that of an immense killing intent. However, one person did notice as it being Mim, as she's almost halfway across that of UA, with, however, feeling the killing intent back from the reporters saying, who, who the hell is, have that much killing intent? Worried for her Izuku, she want, however, she realized that Izuku's at UA, so he'll be safe. However, better safe than sorry, she's going to tell the other dragons alongside those of the former soldiers and adventurers of New Alberia as well. This is not the actions of that of a worried lover after all. These are more of the actions of a battle-hearted soldier and war and warrior-ness that understands that bloodlust alone means trouble after all. Back in class 1A, everybody begins to talk about the reporters outside with even Kaminari basically commenting saying, Seriously, I really hope that we get on the news. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? With then soon Jiro speaking up saying, are you such, are you really that much of an idiot? There's no way that they're just going to put anybody on the news. If anything, they just want it, just like they said, they just want information on All Might. With then Tokiyami saying, they'll most likely spit it in a way that would either put All Might in a better light or put him in that of a negative light too with Kota basically nodding. However, as for Izuku though, he's not really listening to the conversation. As for a split second, he could feel bloodlust, undeniable bloodlust outside, with then thinking, was I imagining it? Before I came into UA, I felt the bloodlust. As soon as I hit the doors, it soon went away. <sighs> Probably because being in UA, I'm basically well protected. It's most likely the bloodlust was more concentrated from the outside instead of entirely on the inside. <sighs> Still, maybe we should tell Mr. Aizawa about that. Hopefully, and maybe the teachers too. With Vince, so as the door soon slides open, as being that of Aizawa, as homeroom is about to begin. With then coming into the room, as the underground pro could up and say, ah, good, you're all in your seats. Pro a still a little bit loud, but at least still, at least you're making progress. With then, soon, and soon going to that of the podium, before saying, now I looked over that of your battle trials. Some of you still need to improve and need to learn from your actions. But of course, this is why we have that of a, while we have that of a sparring session, Originally, you weren't supposed to be fighting against each other. That's something that you normally would do during that of your second year or that of your first, that of your third year. But given that all, but given that all might, just like I do have full control over my class, he does the exact same thing as well. I can criticize, but I will not judge. With then everybody in the class internally thinking, then why bring it up then? With then soon speaking up saying, however, a few of you need to learn need to learn some at least some restraint. But then soon looking at that of Bakio saying, Bakugo, when you when you're facing against Midoriya, I've heard basically the audio in combat. You allowed Midoriya to basically egg you on and manipulate you. Not only that, he was even able to steal that of your earpiece so you wouldn't be caught in contact with that of Ida. Even though you were playing the role of a villain. It can turn the t villains can do the exact same thing to that of heroes as well. Turn the tide and make it harder to coordinate with one another. You need to learn to keep your anger in check and your emotions as well. Do I make myself clear? But then Bakio grumbling saying, yes, sir. But then continuing saying, like I said, you have plenty of potential. Don't let it go to, don't let it be wasted just because, because of one loss. But then soon looking at Shoto saying, Todoroki, you may have won your match as well. However, next time, you can't always rely on using your quirk for any, anything like that. There are times when, when villains have that of a heating quirk or a way to counteract your ice. Now, you'll need to rely on your teammate to help you out as well. 
can't keep doing everything by yourself. With then soon, Shoto basically couldn't help but sigh internally before Donnie saying, Yes, sir. Understand, sir. With then soon saying, Also, with then looking at Mineta saying, Mineta, you barely did anything for your battle trial and you allowed me, and you also that of Momo do everything. The only thing you did was ma mainly ogle at her. With then hearing that, Momo couldn't help but glare that of holes into that of Mineta as well, feeling the perverted perverts, remembering the perverted perverts look on her when she was, well, creating out of a barricade for them during their battle trial class with saying, next, you better be, you better step up. It's bad enough that you were in the lowest of the class. You will be I wasn't, I won't be completely lying. You will be removed from this class if you can't show, if you cannot measure up and show results. Do I make myself clear? Within, Mineta gulping saying, yes, yes, sir. Well, that's enough said. Now then, we have to bring up something that's important and detrimental to your future here at UA. Within, everybody getting worried and somewhat anxious. Within, I saw bringing up that you need to choose a class rep, so get to it. Within, everybody feeling somewhat relieved, saying, oh great, just normal school stuff. Before then, hands began raising up higher and higher with people basically screaming that they want to be class rep. Within, Izuku and his own inner monologue basically smiling at everybody's enthusiastic. Even Bakugo basically screaming out that, he, that he's a better class rep than any of them. Main reason being for... In a normal school, being class rep would be tedious after all, and it wouldn't, and it wouldn't give you anything at all. However, at it being a class rep in a hero school, on the other hand, it just shows that you have that of leadership qualities, which would work well if you wanted to go into that of an agency, and then start your own agency at that. So, being a, so taking up the role as that of a leader while also doing that of extra work. Basically shows your initiative for Izuku. The memories of him being the being the former king of New Alberia, the dragon, the dragon king. At that, him, you, him being class rep would basically overqualify him. So maybe he should step aside for somebody else to be class rep instead. Hell, he'll even take that of vice rep if anything. As he remembers the battle trial, realizing, hmm, Yairosu would fit the w fit well as that of class rep. Her analyzation skills are almost close to the same level as mine. Plus, I think she would fit well as class rep. And not just me, Ida as well. I think he would make a pretty great class rep too. He's got the, he's studious, stern, and he's mature as well. Well, a little bit too mature. At least he needs to start acting at least a bit of his age, like that of a teenager, which still fits the role pretty well. Hell, I would even give it, surprisingly, I would even give it to that of Kachan. Guy's a pain, not as class rep, but at least vice rep. Guy's an asshole and arrogant as hell, but he's studious. He wouldn't have gotten the highest points throughout our entire time as Aldera if he wasn't, if he wasn't a perfectionist after all. But him being... Vice rep is a better position. Somebody being that of class rep, basically, well, keeping him in line at the exact same time could basically keep things in check. It could, things could turn into screaming matches, but better than him basically being in charge and screaming at everybody. Before re-entering that of, that of reality from his mind, soon Ida spoke up saying, that, that is enough. I think it's the best that we decide to choose our class rep by that of the de democratic vote. Within hearing that, everybody couldn't help but be confused. Within soon, Kirishima speaking, I'm saying, uh, Ida, as much as I think that's a good idea, wouldn't it be pointless? With then soon, Jir Jiro speaking, I'm saying, yeah, I have to agree as well. I mean, we all, it's only been our third day here and we all really haven't really got to meet got to know any of us after all within see you saying exactly if anything i think many of us are just going to vote for ourselves within ida buckling down on his argument with his retort saying 
That's exactly the reason why the person who has the most votes is worthy to be that of class rep. Don't you all agree? Within, Ida still having his hand up though, with everybody internally saying, we all know the reason you, you, you also want to be class rep as well. With then, Aizawa couldn't help but sigh saying, I don't care, just get it done before class, before your first period began. After that, everybody began to write down their names or somebody else's name within soon, it all being allied up and tallied up too. As first place being Momo Yayorozu, second place being Izuku Midoriya, with everybody else having added either one vote or just, yeah, one or no votes after all. With then Sud, Aizawa saying, good. Your, your class rep would be that of Yayorozu, and your vice rep would be that of Midoriya. As the two stand, stand side by side, since Izuku is a lot more buffer and a lot more taller, he's at least that of, well, the same height as Momo after all. With then Bakuyo screaming out, okay, who the hell voted for the damn nerd? With then soon, Sarah was speaking up saying, seriously, you expected us to vote for you? With... Then even Kaminari speaking up saying, yeah, dude, you really think we're going to vote for somebody who basically screams and curses on a daily basis? With Bakugo screaming out, shut the hell up, you damn extras. But then Izuku couldn't help but sigh saying, ah, Kachan never changes. But I really hope he does though, at least for the better. With then soon, Aizawa saying, good. Midoriya, Yayorozu. At the end of, at the end of lunch period, Come to that at the teacher's office, where I'll give you give you your duties and roles as that of class reps. After all, who I'm make sure not to be too late. I don't like to see tardiness. But then the teacher saying yes, sir. With that, Aizawa soon leaves the classroom before President Mike enters in. At beginning their English class, so as the day goes by with their classes with their mundane classes now going by. It's now time for lunch for lunch periods, which since all of the first years, alongside that of a few third, second years and third years, also eat lunch together as well. The reason mainly being the cafeteria has quite a bit of space and size that allows quite a bit of people in. And given that the lunchroom teacher is the pro hero lunch rush, hey, the food, food is not just cheap for that of students with, with that of a budget. Given that many students come from all across Japan to come here, so they either live in that of apartments or have that of certain but allowance well privileges. And with that, with all, with food being more delicious for that for that specific reason, within Izuku sitting alongside that of Ochako and Ida and Suyu as well, with then Izuku saying, seriously? You guys voted for me? With then Ida saying, yeah, I did. With Ojuk saying, yeah, I thought it'd be fun voting for you, to be honest. With then Tsuyu saying, so, you, I'm guessing you didn't vote for yourself? Yeah, actually, I voted for Yayorozu. As Izuku began to eat his katsudon, with then realizing, Munch Munch may be a great chef, but it doesn't compare to Mom's katsudon. Or Mercury's katsudon as well. With then Ida saying, I see, I see. So I'm guessing you believe that Yayorozu would be a great choice? Definitely. Her, didn't you see her analyzation skills back in that of the battle trial? Even without, she got plenty of them quite right. However, even I had to fill in the cracks for her as well, seeing on how the matches went. With then Ochako saying, still, I can't, yeah, I still can't believe on how well you're able to analyze things. Plus, it's so it's in that of a huge blur as well. With then soon, so you saying, "Bless you, mutter a lot." With then, Izuku began to blush from the words of Suyu being called out on his muttering. After all, when he's taking notes and analyze, analyzing people's quirks and their actions as well. With then, Ida speaking up once again, saying, "Regardless, I still seeing that you became vice rep. I guess I made a great choice, knowing that you would still lead our class." Within, Ida, Ojaku saying, but Ida, even though, 
Didn't you want to be class rep so badly as well? I mean, you do got the glasses for it. But then Izuku Suyu couldn't help but say, glasses for it? What does that have to do with being class rep? With then, Ida shoving off the, the word saying, being wanting to be class rep and suited for it are two completely different things. Uraka, after all, working for my family agency has taught me that. But then Izuku saying, agency? Actually, now that I think about it, Ida, your mannerisms, the way you speak, I had to say, do you come from that of a hero family by any chance? With then soon, Ida couldn't help but realize his slip up saying, ah, pardon me. I guess I didn't want, I didn't want to bring it up. It's not that I'm not ashamed of it. It's just that I didn't want to be treated differently from everybody else. That's all. But then Ochaka saying, Ida, by any chance, are you loaded? With then suit, Ida saying, don't get it wrong. I have... We're not as wealthy, but we are pretty well off, I will say that. By any chance, do the three of you know about the Ingenium Agency? With then, Izuku began to go down on a tangent about the Ingenium Agency, especially the current Ingenium, who has that of over 100 sidekicks due to his popularity and his response times to that of rescue situations and to, cr and to that of combat. It, with villains as well. With Ida hearing the praise that Midoriya has given to that of his older brother, Tensei, with Ida couldn't help but stand up with that of his, with his hands on his hip and that of fist, he couldn't help but say, he's my elder brother, Tensei Ida. He's, one, he's my inspiration on being a hero. As the second son of the Ida family, I strive to be just like him in every way. But then Izuku couldn't help but smile at, at Ida. The way that he speaks to his brother speaks about him, especially that he was his inspiration. He couldn't help but remember the times about the oh, about his elder siblings, at least the two siblings that actually bothered to look after him. That being the fifth prince of Alberia, Phobos, and the sixth prince, Volts. Phobos was always kind, caring, a bit mischievous and always curious about all, about the world's secrets. But even realizing that he was even willing to tamper into that of dragons by even turning part of his skin into that of drag, turning the right side of his body into that of a dragon. Volts, on the other hand, he's only saw that of dragons as that of an aspect of him to wage war, to grow to grow stronger, even training me to to become something more powerful more determined to protect the people, since he was always a soldier first and royalty second. Even, show, even seeing that of their darker sides during the war, he still remembered how much they still cared about him, even was worried about Zethia when she was taken over by Xenos. Seeing Ida like this, he can't help but just store up old memories. However, getting out of his, re his recommendation Soon, a alarm begins to go off and out of the cafeteria, with everybody feeling somewhat worried and somewhat scared. But then, even to you saying, what's going on here? With then, soon, that of a third-year student could up and say, uh, that, that's the alarm for an intruder. That means a villain is on the grounds. This has never happened throughout my time as a UA student. Hearing that, everybody begins to freak out and get somewhat worried within everybody, within an intercom going on, going off saying, please, all students return back to your homeroom classrooms at the time, for the time being. Please, all students return to your homeroom classroom for the time being. Within hearing that, everybody begins to freak out and sh tries to get out of this uh, the cafeteria as fast as they can, with many people basically shoving, pushing, basically elbowing, so many other people out in the classroom. But then, even Izuku and his group began getting swept up into the crowd as well. With then, see, un unaware what's going on, Izuku was soon pushed up into that of the, uh, up to the window, alongside that of Ida, saying, Midoriya, saying, Ida, I can't breathe, saying, me too. But I, what then, soon, 
Ida, alongside that of Izuku, notice what's going on outside, seeing that to the press from this morning, saying, Midoriya, do you see that? At the entrance. With noticing, saying, yeah, those are the press. They must have snuck into the school. With then, Ida saying, we need to tell them that it's no villains. We, with then, Izuku saying, I got an idea, but hopefully it doesn't hurt anybody. But then Izuku going deep inside of him, aware of the pack inside the dragon pack that he has made, as he goes for that of a specific dragon, one that shows that of comfort, warmness, and open and open, and and welcomes those with open arms. Come, I open the pack. Rise from the ashes, as internally he flint. It almost seems like that of a of that of a red feather. Consumed with flame, soon lands into the interworld of Izuku Midoriya before it, go, it goes into that of a massive flame. With a then a mimicking outside, within many, stu many students who were nearby, Izuku began to panic and push over, with some being trampled, toppled over, and falling. Within, Ida noticing as well, no longer being pushed up to the glass. With then seeing in front, as everybody in the cafeteria soon noticed the figure that was in the air, as it being that of a woman, of a tall, gorgeous, and large woman, with that of short shirt, short shorts that basically cover her thighs, a fur, a that of a feathery orange bra, lar long golden pl blonde hair. And that of flaming red wings on her back, showing that of quite a bit of feathers on her arms and talon claws for feet. As the, as Izuku transformed into the dragon phoenix, within soon, and that of within seeing the perfect opportunity, Ida soon goes up, goes over to Uraka, seeing the seeing that of Izuku as well within. Getting out of the trance, noticing her other friend saying, Ida, Uraka, please, I need your help. I need to get everybody's attention with then soon. She's saying, uh, okay, you need to float me with then soon. Oh, Ochako soon places all five of her fingers from her left hand onto Ida with then soon. Ida basically flying up into the air as then. However, instead of flying to the exit to get everybody's attention, she, he flies over to that of Izuku, noticing, noticing Ida flying over to him. Phoenix Izuku grabs on to that of the tall, the tall engine boy. But then Ida began to scream, saying, It's okay. There's nothing to worry. There's no villain. There's only that of the press outside. They ended up sneaking into that of the school. Everything is fine. With then finally noticing Ida and his words too in front of that of Phoenix Izuku. With then one of the general ed students saying, "Yeah, he's right. There's no villains. It's just the it's just that of the press. They're on the ground." With then everybody else noticing as well saying, "Yeah." With then soon Ida continues speaking saying, "Please return." Please return to your classrooms and out of an orderly and calm fashion. We are UA students. We must act like it and show decorum and respect. Hearing the words from Ida, he could, everybody else began to fall out. But then Izuku began to land down, also putting down that of Ida. But then soon Izuku de, de transformed back into his, into his regular form. But then soon, see you saying, Thanks a lot, Ida, Midoriya. With Finn, he's just saying, anytime, Asui. It's, my name is, call me Sue. With Finn, Ochaka saying, I didn't know you can transform into, well, that Deku. With Finn, he's just saying, oh, right. Uh, about that. She, that's one of my other transformations, actually. Phoenix. It's not really used for combat. She, her main function is basically for healing and recon, after all. Plus, she's also a... Surprisingly, she's also good to keep people calm, given her warmly aura. 
as remembering Phoenix, always being open-minded towards Izuku, caring, loving, and always worrying about him, especially during his sparring sessions with the other dragons. Always the first, too, wanting to make sure that he's safe and well taken care of. With then, the, f the four of them also heading back to Class 1A. Back outside, on the other hand, the teachers began to notice on how and, ga and gathering that of the well press, allowing the cops to basically take them away, especially arresting them for unlawful entry and trespassing as well. Within the principle of UA, the, chima the chimera and the smartest being on the planet currently, Principal Nezu, alongside that of Cementos, and also Pre President Mike and Aizawa, noticing what's going on too, seeing the state of the gate. But then soon, Aizawa realizing the gate is completely destroyed with then soon. President Mike saying, seriously, I guess we got to put that of destruction of private property on their on their charges, too. With then soon, Nezu saying, I believe that this wasn't done by the press. If anything, none of their quirks seem capable of doing something like this. With then Cementa saying, I have to agree as well. If any of them had a quirk like this, there's no way that they would basically become out of journalists. With then Aizawa feeling somewhat worried, saying, was this, I really hope I'm just imagining it, was this some kind of declaration of war by any chance? Continually looking at the gate while also looking outside into that of the city of Masafu. However, on that of the side, a few of the that are the soldiers and spirits of New Alberia notice what's going on too, as men basically told what's ha what happened, as there being two of them, one being that of a dark skin, Sylvian, Sylvan, with that of well, what wearing that of a white that of a white broad tank top and white skirt that goes well with that of her black. With that of her ra raven black hair, with her che with that of a cheery disposition, however, a face that normally would always have that of a constant smile, having that of a worried look. This being Larinen, as for the other person, it being that of an, of a familiar figure, all too well. This being Luca, within saying, <sighs> I thought so. Looks like Lady Mim was right. Somebody destroyed the gate to the, to, the, to the school that Izuku is at. With then, Lorena saying, Oh man, I'm worried for his majesty. If, the, if somebody has attack, attacked the school, which is supposed to be super safe and all, what is it, what's that going to say about that? What do they say? They're not going to probably come back and do it again. But then, Luca saying, I think we should probably tell the others about this. At least about the four grade, the five grade wyverns as well. They'll have that of hu their human forms can basically sneak into the school without breaking a sweat. But for a human to do this, especially one with that of the so-called quirks, nah, something's fishy. Within Lord and couldn't help but have that of a worried look, saying, "Luca, you've never been this pessimistic before, even when it came to your sister." And his majesty as well. You seem a little bit more on edge. Well, can't blame me. After basically surviving a war and basically taking down that of a demon lord, you can't help but feel a little bit worried and keep on and stay on edge. Just don't want to leave things to chance. Let's head back to Haino. With then saying, righty go. But then the two spirits begin to head back. However, little did they know their correction to make to make the right choice of sending the four great wirings in their human form was the better choice. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Love to read them. So, sorry I didn't go straight into that of the, well, USJ arc. Don't worry, we'll go straight into that in the next part. So you guys may be wondering why did I make Izuku the vice rep instead of that of the main instead of that of the main class rep? Well, it's kind of simple, really. Izuku, Izuku, or rather, the print, the the former, the king of 
New Alberia doesn't want to be a leader anymore. If you guys have beaten the game, remember after that, they he basically disbands New Alberia and became and just lived a simple life after all. Izuku still want this is still Izuku after all, even with having even being a reincarnation of the former king, former king himself. It only makes sense that he's going to need to, well, take a, want, not want to be in the spotlight anymore. He wants, sure, being a hero, you're going to be in need to be in the spotlight, but not all the time after all. But that's beside the point. At any rate, if you guys like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to keep it to date my videos when I upload the channel. Also, please check out my Discord, my gaming channel, my side channel. Also, check out my new channel as well. Hope I put that in the description below too. And my Cash App and Patreon. All link in the description below. So, with well, all that said, this is Leon Muki signing out. Later, guys. Hope you all take care. Shiro Kitsune, you know what to do. Hi, everyone. This is White Fox. If you like Leon's video, click the video on the left to see the most recent one. And if you want to see more of this, click the subscribe button and notification bell and check out his playlist. If you still haven't subscribed, do so in the center. With that said, I hope to see you again on my love's channel. Bye!